In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today we read the second Sunday of uh, the readings of the second Sunday of the Coptic month of Thawut. And today the gospel was from Luke chapter 10. And in this gospel, a, Lord, a lawyer comes testing the Lord and asks the Lord, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So he said to him, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered rightly, do this and you will live. Today I want to dig into what it means to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind. I feel like if we love God, the first, if, if we love God, we will hate the world. And that's the message the church is always giving us, like every liturgy. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Anyone who loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I mean, you can't have two loves, like, you can't have two wives, like, they'll be very difficult to manage. You know, our Lord said it this way, you, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and, and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You can't serve God and mammon. So we can't love the world and love God at the same time. Actually, in the um, epistle to St. Timothy, St. Paul, he said it like something very powerful. He said, know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come for men, for men will be lovers of themselves. Not that they will love God. Actually, they will love themselves. They will become lovers of money. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, holy, unloving. Like, look at the terms that St. Paul uses. Unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of, of God. Having a form of godliness but denying its power and from such people turn away. I want to just focus on some of the things that St. Paul said in this. Because either we can love God or we will be lovers of ourselves. Lovers of ourselves. This is like the selfish love. The one that's like so self-focused. And I feel like now we live in like a very narcissistic like world where we only care about like ourselves. If we love God, this is outside. Like love God, not our, ourselves. The love of money that St. Paul speaks about. I feel like we love money because money brings attention to ourselves. Money brings nice things. I like nice things. So we become like a slave of like nice things. Then another word was unloving. Unloving to be cold, like apathetic. I feel that was like fitting for the gospel last, year, last week when the gospel was, um, we, played the, like, we played the flute for you, but you did not, you did not dance. We, we mourned for you, but you did not weep, like you did not cry. I mean, you just didn't, you don't have any emotion. You just, you just do, like, you just exist, like, that's like unloving. You just don't, you just, have you ever seen middle school kids? Thank God there's no middle school people. I feel like all middle school youth have this problem. They're just kind of like robots, like, and you can't, like, nothing that, like, gets to them. The other one that St. Paul said, lovers of pleasure, lovers of pleasure. Uh, I would interpret this now, like now lovers of dopamine, like we just got to get our dopamine fixes, you know, like, and so that's why we always turn here and there. So, you know, the sex, food, music, all that like shows, all that stuff that gives like dopamine. All of that stuff is the love of the world. Yeah. And you can't love God if you love the world. That's why I think the Pauline epistle said, you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. So each one here is a 
soldier. So it doesn't entangle themselves in the messes and the fights and the drama of this world. A person who loves God, number two. So a person who loves God doesn't love the world. The person who loves God loves God, not the world. A person who loves God recognizes their sins and recognizes the grace that God has given them. If we recognize our sins, I feel like if we recognize our sins, we would love God. Because God and our Lord Jesus Christ he came to take away our, our sins. And so, um, remember the story of the sinful woman? The sinful woman who washed the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ? Our Lord gave a parable at the end after she washed the, washed the feet. He said to the people, he said, there was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had nothing to which to repay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? Which one will love him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one to whom he forgave more. And he said to him, you have rightly judged. You have rightly judged. Therefore, I say to her, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, to whom little is forgiven, the same loves just a little bit. If you, if you feel that Jesus Christ has taken away your sins, you will love Jesus immensely, because he's taken away our sins. That's why St. Paul, back to the epistle of St. Timothy, he said, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who enabled me. He has counted me faithful, putting me into the mystery. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, a, pers a persecutor, an insolent man, I was all of these things. And I feel like every person could say this. I was this. I was this. But, there's a but, always a but. But I obtained mercy. I did it ignorantly and unbelief. And the grace of the Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of who I am? Chief. Question for you. Tell me, did the prodigal son love his father more before he, like when he took the inheritance and he left and he had fun and with all the inheritance? Or when he came back? Which one do you think, like when do you think he really loved the father? I feel like when he came back, yeah? How about Mary Magdalene? When did she love the Lord Jesus Christ? Or why did she love the Lord Jesus Christ? I feel like she loved the Lord Jesus Christ because the Lord expelled out of her seven demons. So you can't imagine what her life was before she met Jesus and then after she met Jesus. I think so after she met Jesus, oh, I was like this and now I am like this, you know? So a person who loves God is very conscious of their sins and very, very, very thankful and loves God because he has taken away my sins. Yes? A person who loves God, the third one, a person who loves God is a person who loves to be in the presence of God. Yeah, I feel like King David, I love King David, is someone who really loved God. And that's why if you read the Psalms, like look at the Psalms. I'm going to rattle a few Psalms off right here. Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Another Psalm. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire in his temple. Another psalm. How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, my soul longs. Yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. I feel like David, he loves the tabernacle. Not because of the gold or the architecture. or He loves the tabernacle because he loves to be in the presence of, of God. He loves to be in the presence of God. When I was in, in college, I had a poster. Um, maybe I can see if you can see. Them. I, like, I had this poster. I was a nerd. So I had this poster in my, like, I had this poster. It's a poster of uh, the wins wisdom of Einstein. Yeah? 
the wisdom of Einstein in my, in my room. And one of the, the, the quotes, it had just little short quotes on, on the, the poster. And one of the, the quotes that well, I'll never forget, it said, wisdom of Einstein, an hour, it was about relativity, okay? He said, an hour sitting with a pretty girl on the park bench passes like a minute. But a minute, a minute sitting with, uh, on a hot stove, with your finger on a hot stove, seems like an hour. So I feel like if anyone has experienced this, you know this to be true. Sitting with the person that you love goes like, like goes very quickly, you know? And I was thinking about this. You think like Moses, when he was on the mountain for 40 days, he didn't eat, he didn't, like, what's, what's he doing on the mountain for 40 days? He was just in the presence of God. And he, the presence of God, like, sustained him. And he was enjoying himself in the presence of God. Just like being in the presence of beautiful people like you. I could stand here forever just looking at your beautiful faces, you know? So I love to be in his presence. I love to praise God. I think if we really love God, we would change our attitude toward prayer. We would change our attitude toward things of the church. Like, one of the things that I, I'm struggling with now is that everyone is saying, oh, Bible is boring, Bible is boring, oh, you know, the Bible is boring. Is the Bible boring? I don't know. Is it? Like, that, or, like, okay, if the Bible is boring, then, like, why does David say that he who, like, will meditate on his law day and night? So I don't think it's boring. I think we make it boring. I think we're, we're maybe we're boring, maybe, or something, you know. But God, God is amazing. And those who love God, they want to be in His presence continually. If I love God, if I love God, I will keep the commandments. This is not my words, this is what St. John said. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. So if we view the commandments of God as burdensome, this is an indication that the love of God is not perfect in me. So, um, any heroin users here? No? If I said to you, don't do heroin, am I burdening you? Would you consider me like a nuisance to you because I told you not to do heroin? You don't feel the burden of this command because you already hate this sin. So if I told you don't do heroin, you're like, okay, I already, I don't, I don't like it. But if I told a heroin user, if there was a heroin user here, there's not, but if there was, to please stop using heroin, that command would be very burdensome to, to a heroin user because the heroin user needs heroin, is addicted to heroin. So now leave heroin and now insert any of the pet sins that we all love. You know, like uh, my purity, drugs, alcohol, the commandments of the God, these become burdensome, burdensome to me because I have a, a love or an addiction to some of these things. But the more I grow in the love of God, the less these commandments become burdensome to me. Does that make sense? Because the love of God penetrates my inner being. And then everything in the world becomes meaningless. So we need to change our perspective. Um, the, uh, two more. A person who loves God, and they're similar. A person who loves God, loves his brother. That's why, love your God with all your strength. And then the last part of it was, and love, love your neighbor. That's why St. John in his epistle, he says, if someone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For how does he, how does, for he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this is the commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. So the reality is, I'm sorry I don't know any of you so I can say this, is that oftentimes we don't really love our brother. We don't love our brother because we gossip about our brother. We neglect our brother. We put down our brother. This is like hatred. This is evil. So I would say, like in the words of St. John, how does the love of God abide in someone who is gossiping about his brother? It doesn't work, you know? Um, in 
Acts chapter 14, St. Paul was stoned and he was left for dead. And St. John Chrysostom, he wrote something very nice about this. He says, believe me, what Paul endured may pale in comparison to what we might have to endure now. Paul was physically wounded with stones, but there are words inflicted. There are phys Paul was physically wounded with stones, but there are wounds inflicted with words that can be even more painful than stones. And so, you know, you might say, uh, Abuna, I don't like this person, or this person has a different personality. And we try to justify like all the reasons why we don't want to love our brother. But all of those things really like have no meaning, you know? I think we should follow St. Paul's example. After he was stoned, the next day he went back to preaching to the saint like, he's like, what I leave? <laughs> you take a week vacation, recover the body. But he just went right back to his ministry of preaching. Lastly, the person who loves God loves to serve other people, kind of an extension of loving the brother. Because, you know, when our Lord Jesus Christ, he appeared to um, Simon Peter after the resurrection, and he asked him, do you love me, Simon, son of Jonah? Do you love me more than these? And, you know, Peter, St. Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. So he said to him, feed my, feed my sheep. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Lord, you know that I love you. He said, feed my, tend my sheep. And so the person who loves God feeds the sheep of God. The person who loves God serves the flock. And so I feel that like uh, someone who's very touched with, lo loves to bring everyone to the knowledge of the Lord. Yes. So today we talked about maybe um, six ways we can see if we have the love of God. A person who loves God hates, hates the world. A person who loves God recognizes their, their sins and appreciates the grace that God has given me. So I love God. A person who loves God loves to be in His presence. A person who loves God, His commandments are not burdensome. A person who loves God loves his brother. And a person who loves God loves to serve one another. Yeah? May God, the love of God touch our heart to do all of these sometimes challenging things. And the glory be to God forever. Amen.